guys, welcome back to Mysteries with Pippa. I am so sorry I've been away for so long, I do work full time, but if I could do this as a full time job, believe me, I would. But anyway, let's get into today's case, as I'm sure you guys are all been waiting for. I know we get many requests still, and I'm so sorry that it's been so late, so here we go. Today's case is a truly haunting one, and a tragic one, and one that, especially if you live in the UK, you might have followed, um, Especially if you're my age, about 22, this is something that, you know, will stick with me for the rest of my life. It's just something you kind of grow up with. Um, especially in this day and age, we're all growing up with the McCann case and this case as well, which is the April Jones case. April Jones was born on the 4th of April 2007 in Wales. She lived with her mother, Corey, her father, Paul her sister Jasmine and her brother Harvey. On October the 1st 2012, at the age of five, April Jones's life and her family's lives would be changed and altered forever. The day began like every other day. All three of the children woke up, they had breakfast, they all went to school. Then after school, April had a swimming lesson and when she arrived home, her mother had received a glowing school report from April saying what a good girl she was. She was excelling in all her grades and she was a pleasant student. And so as a kind of congratulations and as a gift, uh, April Jones's mother allowed April to play outside with her friend for an extra hour longer than usual. It's also important to note that April Jones had cerebral palsy which affected the whole one side of her body. Growing up it made her really frustrated that she couldn't do what other children could do and she couldn't explore or run the same way other children could. So at a very young age her mum and dad taught her how to ride a bike and April loved this bike. She could be like any other child on this bike and her cerebral palsy didn't get in the way. So April Jones and her friend were both riding on their bikes and were out on the 1st of October. At about 7.30, April Jones's mum asked Harley to go grab her sister April in for some food and uh, so they could have their baths and get ready for bed. Harley returned moments later screaming, they've taken her mum, they've taken April. What had actually happened was April's friend and April were playing and April's friend witnessed this happen. A man pulled up in a car and started talking to April and then April willingly got inside of the car and the car drove off. Immediately April's mum called the police, they went out searching and what's amazing to hear is that the police took this seriously. In many cases you hear of police and deputies saying, oh, you know, the child's run away, they'll come back. And they don't really take it seriously and it's always too late. But from the get-go, police took this seriously. They had volunteers out, they were scouring the area, they were looking throughout the whole town. And even people from different cities and countries also came up that night to help search for April. The young girl who also witnessed April being taken in the car said something so kind of, I don't know what the word is like, she said it so flippant, she just kind of said it in passing, but it ended up being a huge part of the perpetrator being caught. She had said that April had gotten into the wrong side of the car. This led police to look for a left-hand drive car in the specific area of Wales. Fortunately, left-hand car drive vehicles were extremely rare in that kind of part of Wales and the locals only knew one man who drove that car and that man was Mark Bridges. Mark Bridges was arrested on the 2nd of October, the day after April went missing on suspicion of her abduction because of the fact of the car that he drove. He was a father of six to four different women and he had a numerous of failed relationships and even the day that April went missing, his girlfriend had broken up with him. He was also a former slaughterhouse worker 
and he had minor criminal offences for robbery and theft, uh, spent a little bit of time in jail but never anything to do with children or abduction or sexual offences, nothing like that. But after he was arrested his home was searched and they did find hundreds upon hundreds of indecent images of children including a couple of pictures of April Jones and her sister Jasmine. I do want you to be aware that these pictures were not indecent pictures. There were pictures that her sister put on Facebook and he had actually found them and saved them in the same folder as all the other pictures of the indecent the, you know, the indecent images of the children. And they also searched his house on the second after he was being arrested they could smell a strong smell of detergent or bleach and his house was extremely warm with the heating on and also the fire blaring. Uh, they had turned the fire off that it was in his living room and when they checked through the kind of the ash they had found 17 human remain fragments and also traces of blood throughout the house. Then on the 6th of October 2012 he was charged with the murder, the abduction and the destroying of April Jones's body in which he pleaded not guilty to. But he did state that he did accidentally kill April. His version of events were as follows. He said that he was driving along the road and that April had come out on her bike and he accidentally ran her over. Then he put her in the back of his car and attempted to revive her with CPR and then said that he was going to the hospital uh, to get some help. When she died in the back seat, he panicked and then hid her body. Even to this day, he has never actually said where her body is and refuses to tell anyone. The trial began on the 29th of April 2013 and lasted for five weeks. Mark Bridger had the audacity to, you know, speak on his own defence on the stand and called April Little April, like he was hers, like, you know, oh, Little April, like, he would give her epithets or epi, yeah, epithets, um, and would never, like, once refer to her as April, it would always be Little April or Our April, which is something that made the family of April Jones blood boil. It makes my blood boil knowing what he'd done to her to then call her little April. Ugh. Then on the 30th of May 2013, he was found guilty. Then two months into his sentence, a fellow inmate had attacked Mark Bridges um, and he sustained horrendous injuries to his throat and his face. Even though April's body was never found, the 17 bone fragments that they found in his house, they laid to rest on the 26th of September 2013. Then in November that year, a new law was passed called April's Law, which allowed search engines such as Google and Bing to... <clears throat> block and restrict even more content for indecent images where people were actively trying to search for those images. And then a year after that the government had purchased Mark Bridges home where they do believe April was murdered and that that was demolished by the government and April, Jones's family all stood while it was being demolished. And as if the family hadn't been through enough. Earlier this year, Paul Jones suffered a horrendous brain virus called encephalitis. And after he was treated for the virus, he'd forgotten that April Jones had died. And when he woke up, you know, he remembered her and was asking where she was. And they had to tell Paul Jones, not once but twice, that his daughter had died. So he, and Mark Bridger has um, 
I don't really want to talk much about Mark Bridger, but he has, you know, raised some alarms while being in prison. He has tried to appeal his life sentence, but then later dropped it. This case is heartbreaking and there will never be closure because Mark Bridger will never admit to what he truly did with April's body. But we can only hope from this that justice has been served even just a little bit by him being put in prison forever. And I'm so sorry to end it on such a, such a dull note, but I do just want to take some time out to think about this case and think about April Jones and all what the family are going through every day. I hope you all have a amazing weekend and that you all keep April Jones in your thoughts today. This is Pippa and I shall see you next week with another Mysteries with Pippa. If you like this video, maybe you'll give me a thumbs up. If you love it, maybe you'll subscribe. Till next time.